friendly to casual people like that. But we made a design decision very early on. There's no point of the game you can ever get to where you actually need to reload. Um, and some of the hardcore people told us in no uncertain terms what they thought of that. And, uh, it wasn't pretty. I, I think there was uh, at least there was one death threat in there, actually. Um, how could we dumb a game down and not force him to reload? Well, I, 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 we actually call it good game design. But, uh, when a player dies, the casual player is quite often going to go off and play another game. If he dies in your demo, then you're not going to see any revenue from him because he's just going to go and play something else. Uh, and, and I've since discovered that probably the best way to handle the hardcore guys who got in their case about this was to have a hardcore mode so that those guys can, they can you know, they're, they're hardcore players, they're just going around clicking some buttons to try to find the hardest setting. They will discover hardcore mode where they can be punished as badly as they like for, for failing in the game. And that's great, we can put that in there for them, so, so you know, we've satisfied them. But uh, I think in future, every single one of our games, we're going to try to do this no reload thing, because um, really that is extremely casual friendly. All right, so we're almost done. Um, and a couple more silly questions just to finish off. Sort of, sort of like conclusions. Um, Quite often I've been talking about casual and hardcore gamers like there's two actual separate groups. Like there's, there's hardcore guys over here and there's casual guys over here and there's actually, you know, that's all there are. And, and that's, that's just not true. I, I think most of you would realise that's probably not true. Uh, but it's worth mentioning all the same. Yeah. These are your hardcore guys of varying degrees of hardcore and these are your casual guys of varying degrees of casual. And there's this huge group in the middle that we kind of appreciate some hardcore stuff, we kind of appreciate some casual stuff, but, but, but they fall at all, all kinds of different levels. Um, I, I'm not really seeing a demographic shift here, although perhaps there is a little bit of a demographic shift. Uh, what's happening is guys, old guys like me, uh, getting into a years where we have families and we have kids. And we don't have the time uh, or necessarily the hand-eye coordination to play games the way we used to play them. And perhaps we like our games a little bit more casual than we used to. Uh, you know, certainly, I, I think there's a little bit of a shift there where people are sort of moving and, uh, and becoming a little bit more casual as they get older. But at the same time, there's, there's bunches of hardcore kids just flooding into the market. Uh, Rob Fahey did a, wrote an article, I can't remember if it was on Games Industry or, or Game Dev just recently, about um, you know, were demographics shifting towards casual. And, uh, his point is very well taken that Halo 3 just sold up to a million units on day one. And uh, so there's still a big hardcore audience out there for hardcore games. I don't know about that. The second question, and the more important one in terms of uh, this talk, is was Puzzle Quest just kind of a one off hit? And is, is everything I'm talking here today, am I just talking out the bar? Um, does any of this actually really apply? And I guess we can't even really know this until you know, we try to do a next game, Galactrix, which is kind of a, uh, a spiritual successor to Puzzle Quest, and we see if that's successful or not, um, whether Puzzle Quest was just sort of a, a really lucky break that we got somewhere in the middle of it, just, just a one off hit that will kind of never happen again. Uh, I know a couple of games like Puzzle Quest are in development at the moment with other studios, so certainly. The success of Puzzle Quest has uh, given rise to publishers wanting, you know, all wanting a game like Puzzle Quest out there to see how well it does. So, so I, I guess we'll just have to see how all this stuff goes. One thing I, I can kind of guarantee, and I hope comes out of this talk, to, uh, I hope you know, a few seeds get planted in some heads out there, and uh, uh, some of you who actually add a few more casual features to your hardcore games, because I know they're the games that I like to play, so my life and self-interest here is that uh, maybe a year or two's time, some of you will be working on games and going to really kind of enjoy. So, um, that's the case. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Not really. The first, uh, first actual arrest for a virtual crime is Hebo. You know, some of the stuff that people have done in Hebo Hotel is uh, some of the white collar crime that goes on there is quite amazing. There were cases of, it, when, when you buy something in Hebo Hotel, you'll buy, uh, I just can't quite remember how it works, but you type in the name of the item you want and then your character's name, I think, and then you SMS that and it, it, it gives it to you, it sends it out to your character. Well, someone created a character called X10, and they told people that if you typed Sofa X10, as in times 10, and then your character name, and SMS this, you would actually get 10 sofas. And this went around the net, and uh, all, all people were buying furniture and buying stuff. It was all appearing in this guy, X10, in his account. You know, just <laughs> Huge amount of furniture that you managed to accumulate. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. For, uh, for your rapturous applause, um, just to mention, I just housekeeping the afternoon tea.